Welcome to our channel. Today, we're exploring the eerie world of rural life. We're counting down the five creepiest and most terrifying things rural folks have ever seen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more thrilling content. I used to live in rural Tennessee for a minute. I had a house that was at the end of a two-mile driveway, and my closest neighbor was halfway down said driveway. We weren't close, but we helped each other out here and there when needed. One night I heard someone driving up the driveway. It was probably 11 p.m. or so, and nobody lived past me and I had no clue who it was. I walked over to my front window and looked outside. Some dude in an SUV was parked in front of my porch. He sees me in the window, waves, then gets out and comes up to talk to me. I opened my front door, locked the screen, and asked what he needed. He said something about looking for his dog, so I asked who he was and where he lived. This dude looked me in the face and said, Oh, I live just past you there, and pointed to the densely packed trees that surrounded my house. I told him I hadn't seen his dog and that I apologized for it. He said, Okay, whatever. His tracker just led me here so I figured you would have seen him. I had not, in fact, seen his dog, which apparently had a tracker on it. He turned around and walked back down. I watched him until he got into his car and drove far enough that I couldn't hear his tires anymore. The next day, neighbors came over to collect trash for me. They owned a dump truck and saved me the 40-minute drive to town a lot, and they asked me if I had some dude come to my property last night. They said yeah, and they asked if I knew him. Said no. Apparently, this dude told my neighbors that he lived at the top of this hill across town, the only thing is that said hill had one house, and it was destroyed by a tornado, four years prior. He used the same excuse about his dog, but said it was in their yard. Neighbor had no clue how they got into their yard because they, similarly to me, had a gated yard. I never usually shut mine, because it got stuck when you latched it. But my neighbors always had theirs latched along with a no trespassing or I will shoot sign. Needless to say, I kept my gate latched and bought a master lock for it after. I moved about four months after that. When I grew up, I lived in a neighborhood that had a giant cemetery across from it, and I spent many, many nights drinking and smoking weed in the graveyard. Since this cemetery hadn't had anyone buried in it in over 50 years, no one ever visited, and the city maintained it. One night I'm doing my normal thing, drinking, smoking, and playing on my phone, and I hear someone say, Do you like hanging out with the dead young man? And I turn around and see a 60-something black man wearing jeans, a checkered flannel shirt, and a gold cross necklace. And I tell him, Yeah, I do actually. They don't talk much. He says, You'd be surprised how often they do. And he asks my name. I tell him and ask him his, and he says, I'm Pastor Troy. My wife is buried here, and I'd like to see her. I asked if he'd like his privacy, and he said, I'm actually leaving. You have a good night, young man. And he walks away. When I went home and told my mom that I met a guy named Pastor Troy, she looked at me really strangely and said, Are you sure? Pastor Troy died a couple years before you were born, son. She asked me what he looked like, and after I described him, she said that I was really freaking her out because I described the man she knew was dead perfectly. It freaked me out for a while. I was driving down a windy country road around 4 a.m. in the middle of nowhere to my favorite hunting spot. A bit groggy, as my buddy and I come around the next bend, we notice a large, bright light in the distance. As we get closer, we notice that it is a large fire and that someone must be burning wood. We continue driving and begin to slow down as we get closer. As we approach, we see two people waving us down in the middle of the street. We roll down our windows to hear blood-curdling screams and cries for help. We look over and can see the fire clearly now. An old pickup truck had run off the road and smashed into a tree. The entire cab was engulfed in 12-foot-high flames. One of the bystanders screamed, There's someone in there! 
I could see the silhouette of a person in the driver's seat, surrounded by smoke and fire. The flames were too large to offer any help to the person. To this day, the haunting images are burned into my mind, and the sound of the cries for help is something I will never forget. This is by far the scariest thing I have ever witnessed. Around 12 years ago, I was working at a mine around 60 km away from the town I lived in at the time. I had to make this 60 km drive every day, and because the location is very remote, there is literally nothing between my town and the next town over where the mine is located. Well, one morning, the night shift crew I was on got let out of a shift early, so I headed back home at around 2 a.m. The weather was wild that night. It was windy as hell and pissing with rain, so it was like whipping into my car super hard on the way home. The 60-kilometer stretch of road between work and home is, as I said, very remote. There's not a single man-made building or structure all the way, except for some very large power lines set back into the bush. The side roads are thickly lined with dense green brush and trees that are heaving going to walk through. But around halfway back along that road, there is around a two kilometer stretch of road where the edges of the road are lined with quite short brush, sort of like plains, that go back around 100 meters before the vegetation becomes dense again. Well, it's around 2.30 a.m., and I'm just hitting that stretch of road, and as I said, it's dark, really dark, and wild rain is pelting down, getting blown around by the wind, etc., and I round a corner that takes me right into the middle of that stretch of plain, and my headlights shine across it. Standing there around 80 meters back, almost right against where the brush gets thick and turns into trees again, there is a man standing there. Roughly 25 kilometers into the middle of nowhere, in the pitch dark and a wild storm. It looked like he was wearing dark trousers, some sort of coat or thick jacket, and some sort of hat or cap. I looked right at the guy. He was too far away to see with my eyes, but I could clearly see a man. He didn't move at all and quickly faded out of view as my lights turned away from him. I had the wildest shot of adrenaline surge through me at that moment. I thought I was going to wreck my car. Like, what was he doing out there? Was he stuck? There were no vehicles anywhere on the sides of the road on the way, and he was not near any side tracks. All I know is that I didn't stop or turn back. I sat right up at my steering wheel, almost leaning over it, and drove home the rest of the way rather quickly. I never told anyone but my wife because I thought they'd all reckon I was a kook or laugh about it. I'd always try to avoid driving through there late at night after that night and the only couple of times I did, I literally put my interior light on and didn't dare look out to the sides of the road. I can't explain to this day why that man was out there or what he was doing, but yeah, I don't ever drive through there at night at all anymore. I lived in a really small town with nothing to do, but there was a bicycling walking trail that the state had set up on an old railway. In total, I think the trail was about 40 miles long, but my friends and I would occasionally walk out two to three miles to enjoy nature, or explore, whatever. One day, when I was around 10, 11, a friend and I, both girls, were walking the trail, and we heard a weird banging noise. We also thought we heard a kid crying, but it sounded more muffled than the banging noise. Curious and concerned, we quietly went to the edge to investigate while staying hidden in the trees and bushes. We saw a man with no shirt swinging a bat against a crate, occasionally letting out a loud scream as he attacked the box. For a few minutes, my friend and I were just watching and trying to make sense of what might be going on, but before we could figure anything out, he spotted us. As soon as he turned around to look in our direction, we froze, but when he started walking towards us, we ran. At first, we just darted ahead on the trail a little, thinking he would turn around when he saw us leave, but he didn't. The scariest memory of my childhood is stopping to look back and seeing this stranger walking quickly towards us, bat still in hand, and knowing we were completely alone for miles in any direction. We both sprinted further down the trail, panicking and unsure of what to do. 
We were actually running away from town, but there was no chance to turn back because the man was always still coming when we slowed down even a little. He followed us for at least a mile before we caught sight of the highway through the trees and made a break for it. We made it to the road and walked along it back to our town without seeing him again, but we were both scared out of our minds. When we got back, we both explained what happened to my grandma, thinking we should call the police, but she completely brushed us off, thinking we were just scaring ourselves over nothing. Now I'm an adult, and I definitely would have called the cops if my kids told me this story. I never heard anything more about the guy, and we definitely never went that far on the trail alone again. I'm still haunted by the sound of the kid crying we heard, not sure if it came from the grown man or the crate. My husband and I decided to take our then two-year-old and newborn up to a popular picnic spot about an hour from our house. It was a rainy and shitty day, but we all just wanted to get out of the house for a while. The drive was nice, despite the weather. The babies were sleeping in the back, and all was well. Driving into the park, we saw a few workers doing a cleanup, and every one of them stopped and stared at us as we drove by. No smile or polite wave. It was eerie, but we figured they were just wondering who we were. Then we pulled up at the restroom for hubby, and I got this horrible sense of dread. I didn't mention it, but I told my husband we'd just wait in the car and figure out what we're going to do when he gets out. He told me to lock the doors after him, and it'd only be a minute. All the nearby workers were still stopped and staring at us in the car. All the hairs on my arms were standing up, and internal alarm bells were ringing. The workers started edging their way down the slope towards us, slowly but surely. Hubby got back and said this place was giving him the creeps, and we left. Thankfully, nothing came of it. But when we were recounting the weirdness to some friends, they told us about some alleged wild panther sightings there. This was in rural Australia. What is a panther doing there? Either way, screw that place, screw those workers, and screw trying to pretend not to be terrified when you've just given birth.